This is Adam with Tech Dive AV Club. Today we're going to be talking about how to uh, edit a conversation with yourself. So how to double yourself on uh, camera. And that's mostly an editing trick. So first, you need to film, just get your camera on a tripod and don't touch the tripod. If you have a remote like this one, use the camera remote because touching the tripod at all can really make this effect more difficult to master or or screw up how it looks so you really just don't touch the tripod and the camera tighten everything up real tight and leave it two you need to make sure your light source doesn't change so the, see this video over time well, this is despite me walking around there at the end uh, this video over time the light source never changes oh, if it does it changes very very subtly because I do have a window and uh, if a cloud comes over the Sun you will notice that there is a bit of a shade but it's so subtle that it doesn't really mess up the effect in this video so all that being said uh, get yourself on a tripod film some blank footage right F gonna be cut out me at the end there film some blank footage uh, this is your control footage so this will help you if you've made some sort of mistake and you can't go back to film it this will help you give you options on how you can do this so we're not going to be using this blank one in the tutorial here but trust me, if you if you just film the no one on camera at first, that's going to be a great start. Next, you need to film um, you need to film you on camera. And let's see, I had a couple of takes here. There's this take here where I come out of a door and I start talking to the camera. It takes me a few takes, and I leave time. And I've kind of timed out the conversation in advance. I leave time to where when I'm talking, I'm talking to nobody. So let's watch that. Download and do and work along with me on certain things. No, no, it does not mean that there's going to be the end of YouTube. Okay, so I'm reacting to nothing right there because I know and how long this conversation is supposed to take between both people. Now I, there's like four or five takes where I actually do different timings because uh, I did like long pauses, I did it again with short pauses, I, I did it like a bunch of times that way I'd have plenty of footage to edit with. Uh, and I've done this a few times before, you kind of get a feel for how it's supposed to go. So then the next, don't move the camera at all. If anything, leave it on. If you touch it and move it, you're gonna mess it up. So leave the camera on and walk over and do the other side of it make sure you leave the appropriate pauses in that conversation uh, one of the things to do is what do you do when you're not talking and this one I decided I was gonna look at the camera I ended up not using that shot and started over because that one looked really awful uh, the, I'm pretty happy with how the final project turned out um, so let's take a look at the final and then I'll show you how to do it so this is the way the final one turned out Hey, it's Adam. Just here to tell you that I'm going to start making Whoa. some stuff on Skillshare. Hold the phone there, Adam. Is this the end of YouTube? No, no, it's not the end of YouTube. Skillshare is like a uh, Netflix kind of thing, except instead of movies, you're subscribing to tutorials about... See what I did right there? So one thing you can do, I just pulled in with the event pan crop. You can, you can slide this in and out on exactly I'm gonna hit control Z because I don't want to move it but uh, you can slide this in and out and and crop in and see how I cut out all this here so that way I don't have to worry about what I'm doing on the other side of the camera it gives me a little more leeway to have a freer conversation so the best way to do that if I actually got a camera shot of me having this entire dialogue on my own so if I would have done this right I would have done like the three or four takes of me talking to myself wide angle and then I would have shot tight angle without having to go in and editing but this is a way to do it in the editor is to go in and get this tight angle here that way you don't have to worry about what the other person's doing or saying or timing out uh, throughout the whole time it's a great way to kind of give you the effect but also let you have a little more freedom in how the conversation plays out uh, so you can jump in and out of that for both sides really and so you can do that in the editor but the best practice is to go ahead and film it tighter uh, then you have plenty of footage to work with. The more footage to work with, the more options you have. That's typically the way it goes. So then it then you hear some audio lead in back here and we pull out to the two shot. Scheduled YouTube content. No worries there. You're not losing anything. Okay. Well that's good yeah, news. You're not losing anything. That's pretty anything. good news. But if you sign up through my affiliate link, that helps me out a lot. It helps me out a lot. Thank you.
All right, and so uh, if you notice here, I am uh, working on some Skillshare tutorials and uh, pretty excited that I've been accepted as an affiliate by them. And if you sign up, uh, even for the free trial, that helps me out. And you can do it through my link, which will be below the video. If you don't care about Skillshare or you don't want to do uh, more personalized lessons with me, like I said in this thing, it's not going to be taking away from my YouTube stuff. But if you don't want to do more personalized lessons with me where uh, you have stuff to download and have it kind of be more inclusive rather than one thing at a time, kind of a, a, a series of small videos to help you help you through a process. If you're not interested in that, don't worry, just stay subscribed to YouTube. If you are interested in that, just please go through that link and uh, I'll be, I'm not on Skillshare yet, so uh, that is caveat, I'm not there yet. Anyway, so infomercial over, let's go back to how to do this. So, uh, first you notice that you gotta layer the shots. You need to put one, uh, right here this one I'm gonna delete that that was like I said the control shot to help you if you have issues I'll show you what to do with that in a minute uh, get the footage of you talking on one side there's my clapper there uh, get the footage of you talking on one side the right footage that you want and then look for where you can move to the other side cut it and then you'll want to layer it just, if, if you're having trouble with this, uh, moving the space in the audio out, you can just select. I like to hamburger it to where the top is the farthest from the, the top's farthest from the audio. That way these are together and then I know this is spaced out from there. That's that's just usually how I like to do it. It helps me, helps me see, but you can layer your audio any way you want. They'll still be connected to the right thing. So uh, then the next thing is how do you make yourself, how do you see through it? Well, if you fade, you can actually make yourself a ghost. Look at that. Isn't that cool? You can have two ghosts there talking. Uh, Netflix kind of thing, except instead of... And so uh, that's one thing you can do, actually, especially if you put this over your control shot, like I was showing you. Put it over your control shot. Then you just have a ghost effect, right? Or you can even... This is your opacity slider here. It's how, how much you can see through something. Then you can even fade. Hold the phone there, Adam. Is this the end of YouTube? Like that's a slow fade, a really fast fade. Hold the phone there, Adam. Is this the end of YouTube? And then you get some sort of a teleport. Alrighty, so that's how to do a teleport effect, but what we're gonna do is delete this reference footage here, and we're gonna go to, we're gonna find the original shot, slide this in here. And I'm going to show you the roughness of it. Like I said, you got to figure out the timings and everything else on your own. But then you go to Video Effect, and you can see there's Cookie Cutter and Crop. You're going to use Cookie Cutter because Crop kind of makes your thing a little laggy. Both would work, but uh, Crop makes your video a little laggy to work with. For some reason, Cookie Cutter just works a little better. I like throwing on the top one there. And then uh, you can cut away all but a section. And then you're going to want to choose Rectangle. Whatever works best for what you're doing, you know, if you want a disembodied head, that's something different. Um, but uh, for this one, we're going to use a rectangle, and we're going to increase the size of it. And let's see. I just kind of got to get it sweet spotted there. So I like to put a little border on it, sometimes just to let me see what I'm doing. I actually have a live stream of me doing this, but in the live stream is more about me doing the creative part of the edit. So if you're interested in that, then uh, totally give that a look. But if you're not interested in that part, let's see. Let's get rid of the border. So we're going to want to get the top of the screen too. So let me... You can also, so you don't have to use the center here, you can use the center tool on this as well for cookie cutter. But this is the uh, feathering effect. I like to add a little bit of a feather because it helps, it helps when you take the border away, uh, hide some of your mistakes. If, if uh, there's a little touch of a mistake, it makes it more subtle, less jarring to the eye. Um, just a very little bit of feather though. The repeat X and Y is not going to help you in this case, so don't worry about that. And then um, really we're just worried about I'm going to go to cutaway section actually and um, 
and do it that way. So we're, yeah, there we go. That makes it a little easier. So then we have a little more control over the shape. So let me get my border back so I can see what I'm doing here. Just a little tiny border helps you, helps you see. And then we want it a little bigger. There we go. That's a way to do it. So there's no wrong way to cookie cutter as long as you can see what you're doing. And then let's take that border away and see if it looks clean. There we go. It's a clean look. Sometimes you, if you have a line here, you could maybe line it up with one of these uh, uh, panelings or something in a wall to kind of help hide it. Uh, that might make it look worse depending on your shot or what's ever going on. But if you've got a clean shot where your tripod doesn't move, then, um, then it's actually very easy to hide. It just blends away right there. So even if we took the feather away, you wouldn't see it. Uh, I've just got it just in case there's a microscopic movement in the camera. The feathering will hide that just a little bit. Just a touch of feather, you can hide that. Now uh, you can watch or one is woodworking or there's all sorts of neat things including video stuff and we're both there me and myself we're both sitting there talking and that's how to do it so the rest of it's just timing creative decisions and when to zoom in and when to zoom out so uh thank you so much for watching this tutorial this has been a tutorial that you can do in both movie studios and vegas pro i do movie studios and vegas pro tutorials all the time so subscribe if you're looking some for more like if this video helped you out uh you can watch the live stream if you uh w are interested in my creative decisions about this and you can uh sign up on skillshare if you want to help me out anyway thank you so much for watching i'll see you next time